Hello, my name is Yijun and I am a senior data scientist at Shopify. Today we'll be talking about projection of suit and why PC could be a bad idea. To start, let me give you a quick motivation of why we need dimensional reduction. Well, it can be easily see that in the 3D space, the blue dots and the red dots are well separated. But if we don't do the dimensional reduction properly, then we'll see that the, in the lower dimensional space, the, the blue dots and the red dots will show a non-separable pattern. And that is why we need, definitely need a proper dimensional reduction method. However, if we check dimensional reduction, at, at least 90% of the time, they are interchangeable with PCA, despite the fact that there are a lot of other dimensional reduction methods available. Let's take a quick review of what is under the hood of principal component analysis. So suppose we have a unit length vector u, and let's define qu as a sample variance of our data x1 to xn projected onto this direction or this unit, a unit length vector u. And then we just define the first principal component as one that maximizes the, the sample variance. And all the subsequent principal components are the one that is orthogonal to all the principal, previous principal components, uh, but also maximize the residuals, uh, the sample variance of the residuals. So by the end of the day, the principal components will help you to find a lower dimensional subspace that preserve as much variance as possible. However, I have a bad news for PC. That is, the variance does not necessarily align with our interest. Here's a toy example. We construct the 2D data with the first component following a normal distribution with the standard deviation of 10. And the second component follows an exponential distribution with the parameter equals 1. Now, can we learn the normality of the original data from the first principal component? The result will be totally misleading. So a more fundamental question is, why the QU has to be a measure of variance? And that is exactly the intuition behind the project of suit. I'm not going to take all the credits because in early 70s, Kruzko, Friedman, and Tukey, some of the greatest statisticians, has already discussed this question. So the idea is simple and straightforward. We just replace QU, the measure of variance, to any to an arbitrary objective function that is aligned with the problem we want to solve. And then we just solve this exact same uh, optimization problem. All right, mission complete. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you so much. And of course, I'm kidding. Unlike PCA, well, the principal components uh, coincide, coincide with the, the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix, and which is easy to solve. For projection pursuit, we are facing arbitrary objective functions, which means the analytic solution does not necessarily uh, exist. And also, as far as I know, there is not a single optimization method that is designed for a unisphere. And don't forget the curse of dimensionality. So we're working with high dimensional space. It's so easy to miss a part of this space. In my thesis, I was focusing on tackling these problems. The tier DR is that it's a divide and conquer algorithm. But due to a time limit, I'm not going to go through all the details. Let's just have a quick overview of the two most essential components inside the project of pursuit package, which helps us to solve the problem. The first one is to generate a low discrepancy sequence or a unisphere to help us roughly estimate the surface of the objective function. On the left, uh, we can see the random numbers generated using the default random number generator on a two-dimensional unisphere, also known as a unicircle. And on the right hand side, we can compare it with the low discrepancy sequence, which covers the space much more evenly and also uh, still have, contains the randomness. Well, with the estimation of the surface, we can now select a few hotspots that are likely to be close to the final solution. We can conduct a local optimization in the neighbors of each selected hotspot. The key here is to notice that a d-dimensional unit sphere is isomorphic to a d-1-dimensional hypercube. So we just map the neighbor to a hypercube, and the corresponding optimization method for hypercubes has been well developed. We just need to map back the results to the unit sphere. Now let's look at, look at a toy example to show how the package works. Suppose we generate 536-dimensional random vectors. Each of the first five, uh, 35 dimensions follows a normal distribution, while the 
Scandinavian is a decreasing sequence from 36 to 2. In the last dimension, we have a gamma to 1 distribution. You know what PCA will do. The first dimension will be the first component, and the second dimension will be the se second principal component, etc. But for some reason, suppose we are interested in the skewness of the data. Then we just define the objective function as a measure of skewness. Or here, we use the square of skewness here. PC, will have, PC does not have any flexibility, and it will just do the dimension reduction blindly, but we can feed our objective function to the project suit, as well as telling it that we want to output three dimensions. Let's just compare the first dimensions from both methods and compare it to the true skewed component in the original data. On the right, we almost successfully recovered the gamma to one distribution, although there are some negative values, but due to randomness, but I'm happy with the results. And on the left, we can see that the first principal component is just a total miss to the gamma to one distribution. We can also compare the computational speed. The original version of this package was written in R, and by moving it to Julia, the computational time reduced from 52 seconds to six seconds. And of course, there's still a lot of room for improvement. Since we don't have an official Q&A, uh, here are two questions you may ask. First, it is still slower than PCA, and that is correct. But first, it's like suppose you're asking me what is 2 times 3, then no matter how close is 5 to 6 and how much faster is addition compared to multiplication, the correct answer should always be 6 instead of 5. And second, I'm definitely not the best program you've ever seen, so the, co the codes still need to be optimized. And you may also ask the, that there are much more, many more complicated dimension reduction methods, such as autoencoder. And yes, that is correct. But I would also like to make the following analogy. It's like we have the linear regression models, which is simple and interpretable, but very limited. And there are deep neural networks that are slow but complicated. And we still need other methods, such as logistic regression or other generalized linear models which are more versatile than the simple linear regression, but more interpretable than the neural networks. And that is the sweet spot for projection still to leave. All right, here is the conclusion. So next time, if you see someone using PCA, please ask them to explicitly state their objective function and use projection still instead. Most of the time, PCA will just be a bad idea. And it's just a special case of projection still, to be honest. And also, we can have more applications that are looking for, other than looking for skewed components. Uh, for example, in my thesis, I developed a chain point detection method for functional data. That could be a lot more. But of course, we need to make the algorithm faster and more stable. And that's the end of my talk. And this time it's real. Thank you so much.